So welcome everybody and thank you so much for taking Sunday evening with us. You may be watching live or this could be later for a replay, but I really hope tonight is educational. So my name is Kelly Lubsha. I'm a pro six with Life Vantage. I live out in Southern California in Orange County. And my husband and I have our own private practice as physical therapist and we have specialized over the past 20 years in the recovery of neurological disorders, but specifically stroke, traumatic brain injury, and concussion. So I've been asked to speak on concussion and what I love about it is it's actually something that is super common and probably way more common than any of you ever even realize. So we're gonna talk a little bit of what is it, um, what's happening to your brain, what things you can do to help, as well as how to keep your brain healthy and therefore, should you end up sustaining a concussion, your brain is, has the most protection so that you don't end up with concussion symptoms. And then we're gonna bring on another amazing guest and we're gonna talk further about some of the products of the company. So we are gonna get right into this for this evening. So first and foremost, let's talk kind of basics. And for some of you, this may be just like 101, right? And for others of you, you may you know, know more. So I want to give you an overall, like, what is a concussion? Concussion is the type of traumatic brain injury, or you'll hear people say a TBI, that's caused by a bump or a blow or a jolt to your head or a hit to the body that causes your head and your brain to move rapidly back and forth. So people think of concussion, i.e. like sports injuries. And of course, the big movie Concussion came out, which really highlighted sports injuries and concussions, specifically football. But what I really want everybody to understand is this can happen from anybody in a fall, a car accident, from a roller coaster, or any other activity where your brain is jarred. So you may be getting up and hitting your head on a cupboard or getting out of a car. So to be honest with you, we have four children and two of our four children have sustained concussions completely unsports related. So really, it's very, very common. Of course, if you do participate in sports, such as football, lacrosse, soccer, hockey, I mean, any sport, right? Could be volleyball, anything where your head may hit or your body is jarred enough that your poor brain is going, you know, back and forth because it's really the brain that's being injured. And then, of course, you know, concussions are usually not life-threatening, but they can cause very serious, you know, symptoms that may need medical attention, but they often go overlooked. So just take a look at this a little bit, you guys. Looking at a head and hitting, again, it could be your brain going back and forth, right? Our brain lives inside this hard skull of ours. And so if your head shakes hard enough, that brain in there is rattling back and forth, causing shearing forces. And those shearing forces may lead to these concussion symptoms. So again, don't just think athletes. If you look at the percentages, this is the people that are ending up and how they get their concussions. 28% are through falls. I mean, that's pretty significant. And another 20% in motor vehicle accidents, another almost 20% struck by or against an object of some sort, 11% assault. And then of course you look at other you know, mechanisms for those last handful. So sports injuries are not what everybody thinks as of just concussion. It can really happen to any of us at any time. So if you have hit your head before, you may think like, oh, I'm just a little like stunned or dazed, right? But what symptoms should you truly look for if you think, hmm, really, maybe I, I ended up with a concussion after all? Well, things like brain fog, headaches, dizziness, fatigue, those are very, very common light and sound sensitivity. So anything, you know, vision or hearing, having difficulties doing a task that's normally easy for you. It could be that you feel scattered or forgetful, maybe more moody or irritable, or you could have difficulty sleeping. Now, these are just a few of some of the common symptoms that you'll see, and we'll talk a little further about the more extensive. But these symptoms can be scary, they can be frustrating, as you don't feel like yourself anymore, physically, mentally, and emotionally. And again, we'll go into that. If you've had a concussion, then you might be saying, feeling misguided, yes, that was me, absolutely feeling misguided. Because on the surface, you look fine, right? So people don't understand that like you're injured. What do you mean you're injured? You look normal, you're walking around, you're talking. 
Yes, but the brain is injured. So you also might start feeling like, well, why isn't it healing? Why do I still have headaches? Why am I still having you know, sensitivity to sound? Will it heal? Can it heal? Are there things that I can do or should I accept this as my fate? Well, to make matters worse, many medical practitioners, now a good handful of us today know different, but the majority of the people still get very generic advice. You might get some medications to help calm the symptoms, but they're really not treating root cause. Or they might say something like, just go get some rest and limit your activity and then you'll be fine. And that kind of what was old school is we thought just rest and you'll be fine. And if you go and ask the doctor for more testing, like a standard CT or MRI, they're not going to pick up on your neural damage. Now today there are new tests out there that can show more damage than others, but you have to be getting specific tests. And a lot of doctors aren't going to offer those to you, especially in the beginning. So if you feel stuck, you're plagued with anxiety, or you're annoyed because of the lack of answers, you're sad that you don't have like energy or focus to be present with your family, you're not alone. And so I'm going to share a little bit more about these are post-concussion syndrome. These symptoms may go on for days, weeks, months, and beyond. So it's going to be critical to take an extensive, well-rounded approach in healing you know, truly your brain. And if any of you have had a concussion or you just want a reference for a concussion, there's a book called Brain Save, and it's by a neurologist, Dr. Titus Chu. I would highly recommend you, you get this book, and this came from him. He says there are many, you know, you could have physical symptoms, mental symptoms, or emotional symptoms. So you guys can read them, but they can run the gamut again from just physical fatigue, balance, light sensitivity, headaches, to mental symptoms of brain fog, hard to think clearly, slowed reaction time, difficulty concentrating, or emotional symptoms of why am I irritable? Why am I sad? Why do we even feel more emotional? Or maybe you never had anxiety, depression before, but you have them now. So don't be afraid to think like, what's wrong with me? No, these are real in post-concussion symptoms in the syndrome. And what can go on from there, you know, can actually predetermine you for things down the road like early Alzheimer's and dementia, things like that. So it is really serious that you take this information for those that need it because truly you can heal the brain. So what's going on inside my head, right, with concussion? So again, it starts with a blow to the head. You have a concussion, which is known as a mild traumatic brain injury. It is the most common form of TBI. And post-concussion syndrome afterward is very real. There's a neurobiological problem deeply rooted in several neural networks that make up your brain. Okay, so we're going to talk about that, right? This imbalance in these neural networks. You're asking neural what? <laughs> so what I love, because this is my passion specializing in the recovery of brain injuries and stroke and everything, is that our brain is amazing but it can't be replaced like other parts of our body, okay? The brain allows us to feel, to think, to move, create, grow, to love. It is an amazing organ. And we can experience all of that because of the communication that happens between our brain cells, our brain regions, and our neural networks. So let me briefly share with you a little information about our cells, the regions, and what are these neural networks as, as far as concussion. So the cells in your brain, they're itty bitty, okay? And this is where it all begins. Believe it or not, the diameter is like the, about the width of a piece of dust, right? You can't even hardly see it. And in your nervous system, there's over 100 billion brain cells, okay, that are going to make up these neural networks. You have more brain cells than there are stars in the galaxy, right? For a picture of how big this really is. So each brain cell itself, each cell connects with over 10,000 other brain cells that live close to one another and they form regions. So imagine if that connection from one cell to another, right, that connection is disrupted. It just can't communicate there anymore, but it's supposed to communicate with 10,000. So maybe just a few here or there, like you have a few streets under repair, so you gotta go other directions but it makes you not fully function. And each region really of these neural networks has its own unique function of the body. 
And you can actually take a quiz inside this book that I told you, Brain Save, and it kind of tells you what neural networks that are probably affected for you with your concussion. <clears throat> so, but the star of the show amongst all your cells, your regions, is truly these neural networks. Through activation and deactivation, the patterns of these networks are what gives the experience of the world to us. So it's so fascinating that we're studying all of this and how you know, we're using our own brains to study the function of the brain, right? So I want you to just understand that every experience that you have as a human being is involved with these neural networks partnering and talking to one another. So what happens to the neural networks after you have a concussion, okay? Number one, you get immunotoxicity, bad. <laughs> Basically when that physical trauma happens, chemical traumas happen within the brain. That chemical trauma starts taking place and leading into a cascade. This actually triggers an immune response leading to widespread inflammation in the brain. We all know inflammation is a big baddie, right? And so now our brain is full of it. And if the level of inflammation gets high enough, it can truly start leading to cell death. And when they die, they start releasing these chemicals called glutamate, which is normal, okay? But glutamate is a very powerful excitatory neurotransmitter. And when too much of it is released in the brain and the cells gobble it up, they actually become overstimulated and they die. So the last thing any of us want is cell death. But unfortunately, if that inflammation is not addressed, that's exactly what starts happening. So this process overall is called excitotoxicity and it's a deadly chain reaction of inflammation and toxicity triggered after the concussion. So is it important to control that? Absolutely. So let me give you 12 biggest obstacles to healing that I hear all the time and I can read about all the time. Number one, <clears throat> unchecked brain inflammation. Most people do not understand how to eliminate inflammation in the brain. Unmanaged mental and emotional stresses that we all have, the world is so vast it's so distracted already, now having a brain injury, living in this crazy busy world makes it even worse. Uh, digestive imbalances, it is critical, especially in the first you know, couple months after a concussion to truly eliminate gluten and dairy. Very, very um, high percentage of people end up with digestive issues, uh, blood sugar imbalances, your mitochondria becomes very sensitive and also can die off. So improving your mitochondrial health, you might end up with food sensitivities you never had before, hormone imbalances, joint and muscular imbalances, toxins left over in your body, uh, single nucleoside polymorphisms, untreated autoimmune diseases, and hidden infections. These are all obstacles which some people never even think about when they're saying, oh, I just sustained a concussion. It can be very widespread. So it's complicated, right? It's very complicated, but we try to make this as simple as possible. So I want you to understand that if you look at that graph, you have pre-injury factors, meaning have you previously had a concussion or a TBI? What is your physical, mental, and social factors before you hit your head? And actually, what is your sex before you hit your head? Then you have injury characteristics, right? Then you go on and you have all these factors and overlapping symptoms and then ultimately what happens to your outcome. So this is a journey through having a concussion to hopefully you're having a good outcome. But I want you guys to understand if you haven't had a concussion or you wanna protect your brain optimally, pre-injury is critical. So how can we be proactive to help the health of our brain to decrease our risk factors of concussion symptoms. So you heard it, you've heard it again and again, is that reduce inflammation. And specifically in concussion, we are talking reduce brain inflammation. I am so proud that we have the most powerful way to decrease brain inflammation, activating that nerf 2 pathway using Pertandem nerf 2 turning on your own body's anti-inflammatory genes, turning your own body's detoxification system on and cleaning up that trash, 
upregulating your own body's antioxidant system because it is critical to upregulate glutathione, the brain's master antioxidant, as well as, of course, the other benefits of catalase and superoxide dismutase that truly are going to give your brain the best chance of reducing that inflammation. But other ways you've got to reduce inflammation that I think people forget about or don't understand that they play such a role is the omega plus that we have. DHA is a fatty acid found in high concentration in the brain and in your brain membranes. And it allows for that neural communication of the neural networks that we were talking about. If this decreases with all of the inflammation that's going on, <clears throat> um, as it does that, we need to decrease that inflammation. And when we decrease that inflammation using that DHA, it ac actually upregulates the gene that produces BDNF. BDNF, you can also get it with exercise and running. I always say I'm gonna keep that. It is, it's a protein that is essential for neuroplasticity. So if you guys wanna keep your brain healthy for life, you want that neuroplasticity, you want to upregulate that BDNF. So be sure you use that omega plus. And then another I just wanted to throw in that's actually very important is magnesium. Magnesium is the master mineral that supports neuroplasticity and assists unstable, unstable brain cells. So um, that also is important. The other is mitochondrial health, right? We talked about how the mitochondria commit damage. So we know they produce ATP. They're the powerhouse of the cell. Again, don't want to keep like certain people may already know a lot about it. Mitochondrial health is one of the biggest buzzes out there. But the chemical cascade that happens with traumatic brain injury and with a concussion sy syndrome, you just need to understand that that damages your mitochondria. So we have to find ways to repair it. You can find some other ways, you know, to shock your system. Hopefully you're all reading multiple ways so that you're getting multiple inputs of, of getting your mitochondria the healthiest possible. But adding per tandem nerf one is going to help do that and give you the necessary um, energy for all the rest of your healing cells, the cell regions, and your neural networks. I have to say, <clears throat> gut health is our second brain. We all know there is a direct access. If you don't know, I'm telling you, between the gut and the brain, okay? The gut gives off and communicates to the brain, and actually there's more chemical reactions going to the brain from the gut than the brain to the gut. So interesting. So I want you to understand that the health of your microbiome is, is what is gonna send positive or negative neurotransmitters of stress, anxiety, mood issues up into your brain. So cleaning up the gut, having that healthy microbiome, having a pre and probiotic, remember they are all not created equal. And I'm not going to spend time on that tonight. I know there's been other discussions specifically on why the Life Vantage products of the prebiotic and the probiotic are so, so integral, especially with the time-released <clears throat> Uh, patent on it with the BioTrack. But the other thing I want you to know besides your pre and probiotics is you've got to clean up your gut and look at eliminating gluten and dairy after a concussion. Okay. It may be things that you continue on in your life, eliminating those things, but really after that concussion for the first few months, it is critical to help the repair of that gut. So I'm going to give you 10 steps to reset your recovery process after a concussion or a TBI. And I will, I'll be sure that um, there's a link if anybody wants it, because it has a little bit more information on these 10 detailed out. But you've got to prime your cells with a high quality supplement. You've got to look at your overall nutrition, right? Food is information. That brain and that gut need healing like no other. You need sleep and you need downtime. Um, you need to detox using an infrared sauna. You need to be able to block out noise. So having earplugs, block out junk light, having blue light blocking glasses, gentle exercise. You know, it's not just rest anymore. You need gentle exercise. You need to give yourself mini breaks throughout the day. And even practices of meditation can be very, very helpful in resetting yourself after a concussion. So you guys need to keep your brain healthy because number one, let's just not have a concussion. But the chances are you may bump your head in your lifetime, right? So neuroprotection is key. Activating your body and brain, protect it with Pertandem, Pertandem with NRF2 and Axio for the brain. Maintain your mitochondrial health, maintain your cellular health, proper gut health, sleep, exercise, and hydrate. 
you know, prevention is the key. So if we can stay one step ahead of the game, then I think we're on the right path. So you guys, with that, I hope it gives you a better understanding of concussion, what it is, what's happening in your brain, how to start helping to heal and repair it, and how to keep your brain healthy. Therefore, when something might occur, that the symptoms that you are gonna sustain may be minimal or not at all. That's what my hope would be for you.